The original Uncanny X-Men line from Toy Biz was great at the time, huge part of my childhood, but there was one problem with it that I did not notice until 20 years later. I recently started collecting the new Marvel Legends X-Men the Animated Series line, it comes in the VHS packaging, and I wanted to display a vintage figure in front of each because I'm going to keep mine mint on card. However, I ran into a problem. I started researching the old Toy Biz line, Uncanny X-Men, found that it was originally released in 1991, but didn't start reflecting the animated series until the same year it was released in 1992. The first two figures I got from the new Marvel Legends VHS line were Wolverine and Jubilee. So I started looking at Wolverine first, really easy to find in that first wave, but was sporting the Uncanny X-Men colors. In the second wave, he starts looking more like the animated series that we know and love. Going a little deeper, it looks like he had seven figures in the six waves that were released. Jubilee was a different story. I went through the entire line of that original Uncanny X-Men series from Toy Biz. No luck. Turns out she didn't get a figure until 1996, and even then it was in a robot fighter's figure a weird line that I barely remember, and wasn't even in animated series gear. Now Storm is a different story. She was the next figure I got in the VHS Marvel Legends line, so when I looked for her, very easy to find. She was in Wave 1 of that Toy Biz Uncanny X-Men series. However, she had a repaint in 1993 that reflected her animated series glory. Now the next figure I got in the X-Men VHS line from Marvel Legends was Jean Grey, and this is when I continue to see the pattern from Jubilee. Now, she was not given a figure in this first line from Toy Biz with the Uncanny X-Men. However, she didn't get one until 1998, and this wasn't even in her animated series gear. She did, however, receive a Dark Phoenix figure from the Dark Phoenix Saga. This was in a four-pack in 1995, but was not technically in the Uncanny X-Men line. So now I'm starting to wonder, where are all these female figures from the Uncanny X-Men Toy Biz line? Now, Rogue does not have a Marvel Legends VHS X-Men figure yet. However, I wanted to look into it. So, I looked into Rogue, and turns out that unlike Jubilee and Jean Grey, she does get a figure, barely makes the cut in 1994 with the last wave of the series. From there, I explored other female characters in the X-Men animated series. Looks like Mystique did not receive a figure in that uncanny X-Men line. However, did get one with Monster Armor, a short-lived line later on. Lady Deathstrike also did not receive a Toy Biz uncanny X-Men figure, but did get one with the Battle Brigade later on. With Wolverine having over seven figures, you gotta think we could have gotten a Jubilee, a Jean Grey, a Lady Deathstrike, a Mystique. However, we are only given in six waves, three female characters, two of which are Storm. Now, 20 years later, that gap is kind of mind-blowing. But why the disparity in figures? Now, I don't know the answer, and we probably never will. However, there's a few things I can deduce. Yes, in the 1990s, action figures were considered boy toys. And there were more male characters than there were female characters in the animated series. So by that logic, I guess it kind of makes sense why there's more male figures than female figures. But if you can release this bug character, you can give us at least one Jean Grey or one Jubilee. Now, do I think that this line was deliberately sexist? Science points it out. However, if you're going to give us just three female figures, two of which are the same character out of 40 figures, you got to think you could do better. Either way, it looks like Hasbro has learned from the mistakes of Toymaker's past, and three of the five initial releases from their X-Men Marvel Legends VHS line have been female. We got Jubilee, we have Storm, and we have Jean Grey. Now, whatever happened with that old Toy Biz line from Uncanny X-Men, you got to think that Hasbro is on the right start here with this VHS line to getting some equity in characters.